And thank you, my thank you, my elder, for that introduction. And um, I would just like to to ask for a shap shap from someone just to indicate to me that I am not only visible, because I can see myself, but I am also audible. If, I, if somebody can just, Loud and uh, clear just give me that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, sure, it is, it is my, I wish I could say it is my pleasure. I, I think it is, it should be. Um, but I am here with my knees knocking and my teeth chattering um, because these, these um, opportunities that God often brings our way, um, yes, they are for those that you come to serve at that time, but many a times I've learned that God has got something um, that he is working on in my own life um, that he perhaps wants me to pay attention to. As he, as he puts me um, in, in, in places and positions to serve. And I may not know exactly what it would be for this week, but whenever he does this, uh, wakes me up this early in the morning, um, I normally wake up early, but puts me um, on, on the trail so early in the morning, he's up to something. And so I, I, I'm here uh, ready. To, to, to receive or to take on whatever it is that God is up to. It's a pleasure to, to be here. And, uh, you know, I, I, one of the things that I do first thing when I wake up in the morning is to say thank you. Thank you. Um, so I thank God for the gift of this new week. I thank God for the gift of this new, new day. In his wisdom, he divided time, day and night. And, and, and we now have weeks and months and years. And each of those days are actually opportunities to start over. So, um, and as life happens, sometimes the week before is, is terribly, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The week prior would have been challenging, but as, as God has it, he's given us a new an opportunity to start over this week. So I'm not sure. Uh, what last week was like. It, you might have had the best week ever. And I'm hoping that this week would continue um, to be even better. I'm not sure what last week, it might have been a challenging week, but I promise you brothers and sisters that the fact that God has given us uh, another day, another week, and um, we're going into a new month, it means that he has given us another opportunity to hit the reset button, another opportunity to start. I gave a theme for this week. Um, and that was all for that faith. It is something that God gave me uh, a, a while ago, I think in the second wave um, of COVID-19 and I've been grappling with it. And that's why I thought to myself, okay, he's put me here this week so that we can get to a, a point about this issue of, of faith. As many of you know, um, horrible things have been happening as a result of COVID-19, loss of life, at an unprecedented scale, but not only just loss of life, but loss of, of livelihood. Um, and as people in the ministry, as I'm sure many of you here are aware, uh, and as, as you are in the ministry yourselves, we get bombarded. We have our own challenges that we go through at that time, our own losses, our own uh, pains and aches. But even as we are there, we also get inundated with a number um, of messages and prayer requests that we have to deal with on a daily basis. People that are going through so much pain. People that say, I, the last I saw my mother was, was when I put her in hospital. She was there for two weeks and I could not even say goodbye. So we were inundated with calls. But one morning, um, one morning during my devotion, a message, I think it was a voice message, came from one of my mothers um, from PE. While based in East London, I married, uh, the pastor is from PE, and most of my adult life I've spent in PE. So I have a number of mothers there, and therefore I have a number of spiritual siblings. And a message came, and she said to me, Dana, my only son has just been stabbed to death. 
This is in the midst of the peak of COVID-19 where people are dying from COVID. Um, and, and the devil does not stop the murders. The devil does not stop the rapes. The devil does not stop all the other painful things. So while we are going through loss of people dying through COVID, we also have people dying. And I was just dumbfounded because I, one, I know the, the, the young men, uh, like I said, like a brother to me. Number two, I, he has a mother who is, I, I don't even know where to start. I don't even know what to say. I've just lost my son. I, and, and in moments like those, even for those of us who are in ministry, words uh, um, completely fail us. And my, for me, my words failed me. And I remember God, um, I have books and, and, and things like that in my study I, and Bibles, but I, he gave me the song. He gave me the song in my language. It is all a call. And, and, and I just, I went into that song and I want to commend that song to all of us this week as we, as we grapple, as we spend some time um, on the topic and the subject um, of faith. And, and when I, when I, because this, you know, when we often we sing these songs and we, we forget um, what they're about or we don't realize what the song's about. But as I was reading this song, as I was singing this song, I'm, I don't have the best of voices, but as I was singing this song, I realized, man, this is actually a prayer. This is actually a prayer. I'm not gonna read all of it uh, uh, just now because I really wanna go to the text um, for this morning, which, which we will uh, talk about for the rest of this week. Um, and the song says, oh, for that faith that will not shrink. Though pressed by every foe, that will not tremble on the brink of an earthly woe. And that is exactly what the world is going through now. We're hoping we are emerging, but that's exactly what the world is going through now. And then verse two, I stop. The author says, that faith that will mama nor complain beneath the chastening rod, but in the hour of grief or pain, listen to this, we lean upon its God. And I thought to myself, and then the last verse, brothers, let me just give you that one because I have no time. Then the author of this, this, this psalm, um, this hymn closes by saying, Lord, give us such faith as this. And in my language, it says, oh, see, and so that is my prayer for myself this week. And I would want us to, to pray the same prayer um, as we go through this week, the, 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 the hymn writer says, Lord, give us such faith as this. And then whatever may come, I'll taste even now the hallowed bliss of an eternal home. And, and so that's basically what, what gave me the title of our, of our program this week. All for that faith that will not shrink. Because we're going through shrinking times anyway. Um, I'm going to read a quick verse and then one or two things on it and then, and then I will stop and hand over um, to the program director. Um, our our um, verse for consideration this morning, it is found in the book of Mark, um, chapter 9. And um, um, the text is from verse 14. You can read it all the way up to verse 30. And you can continue, but I do not have time to read the whole thing. Um, but for, for context, this the story is taking place after the experience of the Mount um, of Transfiguration, where Jesus was there, and, um, and, and Simon Peter was there, James and John, and of course, where, where Elijah and Moses um, appeared. So they descend from that experience, Jesus and these disciples, to join the other disciples. And when they come, they found a commotion. Verse 18, um, in fact, verse, verse, um, verse 14 says, when Jesus came, he saw a great multitude um, around them, them being the other disciples. Um, and he says, immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed and running to him greeted him. And he asked, uh, what are you discussing with them? Then one of the crowd answered, and this is uh, the man in the story. Uh, and he said, teacher, I brought, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. 
And wherever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples because I came to you, but I spoke to your disciples. Um, and so I spoke to your disciples and they should, that they should cast it out, but they could not. So the disciples could not cast it out. And then, um, so Jesus answered him and say, now it's interesting that Jesus says, oh, faithless generation, how, short, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Then they brought him to him and when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, this is Jesus asking the father, how long has, he been, has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood, Lord. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and ran. Basically, he then tells the story. But listen to the second part um, of verse 22. But if, this is the father, came all the way, he now says, but if you can do anything, but if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Verse 23, Jesus says, and Jesus said to him, if you can believe all things, if I were to have a highlighter and something to make it bold, to, to underline it, if you, listen to, the man says, if you, can Jesus says, if you believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And then, brothers and sisters, this is where I find myself in this um, father's shoes. Verse 24, immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears in his eyes, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. And that's the title of our message this morning. Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. The story continues. Jesus heals the boy from the evil spirits. But I, I have been going through this, the statement of the father for the most part um, of this past few weeks. As I, as I, because when it came, when the song came, I said to myself, but Lord, give me that faith. Um, I do think that I believe, but this father has gave expression to me. You may find the same, I don't know. But he says, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. What fascinates me about this story is that he came. He says to, 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 to Jesus in verse 17, teacher, I brought you my son. I, so in other words, I believe. I believe that you, somewhere where you are, healing is found. Somewhere where you are and answer, prayers are being answered, somewhere where you are, miracles happen, that somewhere where you are, something happens. But Jesus, but, but the disciples could not heal the boy. And Jesus pronounces, he answers to the men, but I think he's speaking to the rest of them and sometimes to the rest of us. He says, oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you and how long shall I bear with you? And then he asks what happened. And that's where the father reveals the depth of what his faith looks like. He says, Lord, this is the story. And if you can do anything for us, please do something for us. And that fascinates me because he came all the way. He came all the way believing that where Jesus is, there's healing, that believing that someone can do something. He finds the disciples, Jesus is not there and the disciples can't help. He does not leave or perhaps Jesus found it before he left. And, then, and, and so he says, if you can do something and Jesus says to them, if you believe something can happen, could it be that Bandana Basekaya, the only stand, thing standing between us and that which we are praying for is the question, is that if, that the only thing that often when we are praying, we are coming to God and we are saying, Lord, if you can. And Jesus is responding to us, if you believe. And so that has left me to go and actually just go dig deep, deep into the issue of, of faith. And of course, many of us know how the Bible defines faith, but I'm going to uh, 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 take a, a sentence or two also from Ellen White, and then I'm, I'm going to stop. 
because um, the Bible, Paul says, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So we know that. We know that. And so when we are praying for faith, a number of times, we sometimes stop at believing what faith is. We sometimes stop at believing. And I think Jesus somewhere spoke and says, even demons believe and they tremble. But the kind of faith that brings life changing is what I believe this father is asking for this morning. Because he says, I believe. Now, in the next, not even in the next sentence, after the comma, he then asks, he prays that God help my unbelief. In other words, I believe. At the same time, I have unbelief. And I thought to myself, well, what can that mean? Because he just said that I believe. But I think he's saying, Lord, I have a certain belief. But the kind of faith that I have, it does not seem to be working for me in the situation that I have. So clearly, I need the kind of faith that you have to offer. Help thou my unbelief. Many a times, brothers and sisters, we, we are called the people of faith. And um, in my language, we say, in other words, we are known as those, allow me to use the word, who subscribe to the concept of Christianity. We are known as those who subscribe to the concept of Jesus. But I believe the kind of faith that Jesus wants for us is deeper than, than a mere subscription as, as if we are subscribing to Netflix or to Vodacom. In other words, the kind of faith that's going to make a difference in our own lives, the kind of faith that's going to open the doors that Jesus is waiting for us to open is beyond belief. It is a kind of faith that needs to come from within, outside. And, I, and, and, I'm, and the Bible is replete. It is full of examples of people um, who, through faith, in fact, the whole book of Hebrews, when it continues, it then speaks, it says, by faith, these people, they achieved amazing things for God. And, and it is not this person of they believed and therefore this is what happened, but they had to place themselves. They had to allow God to live within them. And when they did that, something huge happened. Now, I, I, I love Ellen White. And, and in one of the books uh, where uh, um, the, 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 the E.G. White uh, Foundation has summarized a number um, of statements of Ellen White, um, in, the book is called Prayer by Ellen White. And, 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 and I love how they, they're not defining faith, but I love the statements that they give about faith. So allow me to read one or two of those and then wrap it up um, for this morning. We are going to continue um, on this topic um, for the rest of this week. They say, um, and this is Ellen Ryan, she says, faith is trusting God, believing that he loves us and knows best what is for our good. So faith, yes, starts with believing. Thus, instead of our own, it leads us to choose his way. Instead of choosing our own way, faith leads us to choose God's way. In the place of our ignorance, faith accepts God's wisdom. In the place of our weakness, faith accepts um, God's strength. In the place, um, I just lost my, my path now. Um, and then in the place of our sinfulness, God, a faith accepts the righteousness of God. Our lives, ourselves are already his. So faith acknowledges his ownership of us and accepts its blessings. Truth, uprightness, purity has been pointed out as secrets of life success. Listen to this. It is faith that puts us in possession of these principles. And so when we're talking about faith, we're talking about something deeper than belief. We're talking about something deeper than the fact that God can. As this father came to Jesus, says, I believe that you can. All of us believe that God can. Even those that do not necessarily even go to church on, on Sabbath um, or on Sunday for those people that go. But pe pe most people believe that God can. But faith is deeper than that. She says it enables us to receive God's gifts um, uh, but more than that, faith enables us to receive God himself. It enables us to receive God himself. And, you know, reflecting on, on the statement of this man, I was reminded of a conversation that Jesus also had with Peter. Peter, do you love me? And, and more than these. And Peter says, yes, Lord, I do. 
uh, asks him again, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I do. But in the third one, Peter says, but Lord, you know everything. In other words, the kind of love that I say, I love you. I'm open to the fact that that love is not necessarily enough, but you know best. And so if you're not satisfied with that love, Peter would have liked this man and said, Lord, but will you just increase that love? So this man is saying, Father, I believe, but I have a sense that at a human level, this belief of mine, this belief of mine is insufficient. And so I ask you to give me the kind of faith that would be sufficient as far as you are concerned. And I'm saying to us, as we're stepping into this week, it's not enough to believe. It's not enough to believe that Jesus can. Because indeed he can, but what we need is the kind of faith that lives within each and every one of us. The kind of faith that we actually live it out. Whether Jesus can or can't, it is no longer an issue. Many of us know the story um, of, of, of Peter. What fascinates me about Peter, uh, Peter for me, I, I normally talk about Peter and I said there are two, there are two Peters in the Bible and I love them both because I find myself in both these Peter. The first part of Peter's life, the Peter that we come across when Jesus was here on earth working, walking in person, is the kind of Peter that I think is that first part of Peter, the Peter that says, Lord, I believe. I believe. But something happened to Peter. Something happened to Peter, the Peter of post-resurrection. When Jesus left, we meet a different Peter. We meet a Peter who said at some point, help thou my unbelief. And so we meet a Peter whose unbelief was helped by Jesus. The faith of Peter before Jesus and the faith of, Jesus, of Peter after Jesus is a two. We, we have two different men. And I want to submit the following to us. If you look at the life of Peter, the number of Peter was one who would speak. Lord, I, they can all leave you. I will not leave you. Um, and this is a Peter who stands up to fight for Jesus. This is a Peter who opens his mouth to curse the same Peter who denies Jesus. The main feature of Peter, even while he was walking with Jesus, the main feature and the, and the, and the, What's the word? The, 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 the ruling issue in Peter's life, even while he was walking with Jesus, in my language, we're saying, Umna, it was I. It was about Peter. Even as he was trying to defend Jesus, yes, he was, it was the love of Jesus, but Peter was in charge of his life. Peter was in charge of his faith. But when Jesus left, it is as if a switch came on to Peter's life. And when Jesus left, Peter might as well have died with Jesus and a new Peter was resurrected because the man that we meet in the book of Acts going forward, and we can say the same, um, 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 ladies and gentlemen, about the rest of the disciples, those men were no longer alive. And so there was a certain transition and that transition Paul spoke about in Galatians, I am crucified with Christ, yet I live, but the life I now live the life I used to live, the way where I was in charge, where Umna was in charge, that life no longer exists. But the one that I live now, I live in faith in Jesus. So it is only Jesus who is at play in my life anymore. And I'm saying this morning, as long as you believe, and it stops there, as long as I believe, as long as we approach Jesus and we say, if you can, you are in charge, my friend. But the kind of faith that's going to change this world, the kind of faith that's going to help us to get through the challenges of this world, the kind of faith that's going to allow us to be used by Jesus in the mighty manner in which he used the disciples of old, that faith is not found in us. That faith is found when we replace I with Jesus, when we replace Umna with him. And that is the kind of faith that I think this man was, was saying to Jesus, Lord, I believe, and I believe that the disciples, there I say, even the crowd that was following Jesus, they believed in his miracles. They believed in his ability to heal. They believed that bread is found where Jesus is. They believed that they live will walk and that they, 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 they blind will, they believed all those things, but nobody at that stage had opened their whole lives, their whole heart to say, Jesus, take over my life so that from me, I no longer exist, that you are the one that is in charge of my life. And so as we walk into this week, 
Um, whether you are here as a seven day Adventist, whether you are here as somebody who worships differently or at a, on a different day to us, here is what makes us, what, what would bring us in common. And I strongly believe this. Had it been for a pursuit of Jesus and Jesus alone, there would only be one denomination in this world because there is only one God and there is only one Jesus. But what we as Christians are yet to do on a large scale is to basically put everything that is us and about us on the floor and put it away and say, Lord, take over. Take your place. Take, as Ellen White says, take my heart for I cannot even give it. And so as soon as you come into my life, then I'm no longer there. Then I'm no longer operational. Then I'm no longer. So that's the kind of faith. And we have seen this faith, brothers and sisters, and um, playing itself out in people out there in the Bible, but even in, the, in Bible times, but even people that we know, we've seen this faith playing itself out. So I want to challenge you this morning. Do you call yourself a Christian because you believe in Jesus? Or do you call yourself a Christian because Jesus lives in you? Like, like Paul, you are here, yes, you are the one that clocks in at your job on a Monday, or you are the one that opens your business premises. You are here, yes, you are the mother in your house. You are here, yes, you are the father in your home. You are here, yes, you are the pastor in your congregation. You are here, yes, you are the leader in your organization, but it is not you that lives it, but Christ lives inside of you and he is the one that lives. It is that faith, my friends. It is that faith that Jesus wants in each and every one of us, that faith, is found only in Christ. I close with a statement of Ellen White. I, such, I, I suspect I was not here that Pastor Papu would have come across, would have given you this uh, because it is in the book, Steps to Christ. That book, brothers and sisters, that, that small volume is power. Um, in, um, in the book, Steps to Christ, Ellen White says, if you give yourself to him and accept him as your savior, and then sinful as your life may have been, for his sake you are accounted righteous. If you missed the opportunity last week, please, as we step into this new week, I suggest, and I'm doing the same, I was saying to God, I, sometimes I pray, I was sitting on the floor in my, in my little study this morning, I'm saying, Father, can we begin again? I know it's the, it's the beginning of November, it's not a step part of the new year, but I'd like a new year because within this woman, I'd like a new me and I don't want to do it anymore. I'd like you to do it within me. And so Ellen White says, when we do that, when we believe, when we make Jesus our savior, when we accept him guys wholeheartedly, allowing Jesus, Lord, you are in charge. She says, Christ's character stands in place of your character. And you are accepted before God just as you, you had not sinned. So basically, faith, the kind of faith that Jesus is talking about, the kind of faith that's going to make a difference in our own lives, it is the kind of faith where Christ, whom we call ourselves by, the kind of faith where Christians are not going to be Christians on the outside anymore. Christians will be known as Christians because Christ the character of Christ is in place of the character of Christians. Just like people look at you, they don't recognize you. They see it is your face. They see it is your countenance. They see it is your body. But there is a man. There is a power operating within, of within, within each and every one of us. That is the kind of faith I'm challenging us to pray for, for this week. And then she continues and says, more than this, Christ changes the heart. I don't know how many of you have the same prayer I have this morning. Father, like David, create in me. I take your place in my life. Take your place in my mind. She continues to say, he abides in your heart by faith. Ours is to maintain the connection with Christ by faith and then a continual surrender of your will to him. So long as you do this, he will work in you to will and to do. And she continues to then quote that verse of Paul. So like Paul, we can all say that the life which I now live in the flesh, because I'm here in the flesh, I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. In other words, I'm here. I'm the one that inhales and exhales the oxygen, but I stop as far as that is concerned. Jesus 
takes over. He is the one that takes over. And so this morning, as I close, the last statement from Ellen White, my favorite, I came across it very early on in my, in my walk. And she says that the sanctification of the soul by the working of the Holy Spirit within each and every one of us is the implanting of the character of Christ within each and every one of us. And then she says, this is a daily living, active principles. The Lord, the world needs Jesus. There's a song that says people need the Lord. The world needs Jesus. And when the time comes, he will come in the figure of Jesus Christ, Lord of Lords and King of Kings. But what a privilege is ours, Christians, that while he is not here in person, as he departed, he is here in the person of the Holy Spirit. And what that allows us to do, it allows for Jesus to walk the streets of East London, for Jesus to walk the streets of Johannesburg, for Jesus to walk the streets of Zimbabwe, of Kenya, of Namibia, through me. For Jesus to touch the lives of his sons and his daughters on this planet earth through me. And the only way by which he can do that is if I totally surrender every part and every aspect of my life so that he can fully occupy. And so Lord, I believe, but this faith of mine is not that. Help thou my unbelief, take over. Live out, as our song says, live out thy life within me. That's the kind of faith I'm proposing. That's the kind of faith that I think Jesus is calling us to this week and going forward. May the Lord bless the reading of his word now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you so much. I hope I have not taken uh, more time than I've been allocated. Next time I will have a watch next to me. Um, I will hand over now to the program director. Um, we we need to start again with you. We 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 need to start again with you. One thing we know is that the world is approaching its closing chapters. The second thing we know is that the world we need Jesus. The third thing we know is that for a number of years, we've been playing Christianity. We've been playing church. We've been allowing you in certain aspects of our lives and not others. Lord, we believe. We have subscribed to the Christianity, but a number of us have not allowed the whole truth of Christianity to live, to be lived out in our own lives and for that to impact those in our lives. Forgive us. Forgive us, Father. Thank you, however, for the opportunity that you've given us to start again. Here's our hearts. Here's our families. Here's our minds. We pray, dear Lord Jesus, that you take over from now on. We wish to achieve the big feats that you did through your disciples who put everything else aside and decided to give their entire lives to you. We surrender. I know I do. I know I do that going forward, let not there be any part or aspect in my own life when I pray the same prayer for our brothers and sisters. That, that, let there not be any part from our financial to our emotional, to our mental, to our physical aspect of our lives, to the, the roles we play as parents, as mothers, as brothers, as sisters, as people who are out there in the community doing work. Let there not be any part of our lives that we do by our own selves anymore because we are too human and therefore we err. But we know that you have put this treasure in earthen vessels so that you can empower and enable these vessels to achieve and to become miracles themselves. Lord Jesus, when we plead and we pray for the gift of the spirit, we plead and we pray for that fire that you sent to the disciples in that upper room. May that fire 
ignite each and every one of us in this prayer room this morning, such that as we go forward from here, who may come to God's status, I don't know what it is about these people, but just being in their presence, I find healing. Just being in their presence, I find hope, like you did with the disciples of old. Lord Jesus, you are coming soon. And so we pray that your character may be reflected in our, our characters. We ask and we plead these things together with the forgiveness of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.